All right, production. Production and post-production phases are gonna be the meat and potatoes of what I'm gonna speak about. Um, they're a little bit more technical. Uh, I hope you have a lot of questions when it comes to this stuff and I will happily answer all of them. So this is where you start filming. This is the step where you collect all the necessary shots you need for your final video. So to get into a little bit more detail, there are three um, elements that come into play when you're filming anything. That is your camera, your lighting, and your audio. And this is what I'll be breaking down. So to begin, your camera. I do not want to spend time here today telling you guys that you need a fancy camera to make a good video. If you have this and you know how it works, phenomenal. If you have someone on your team that knows how to use a camera like this, great. But I don't want anybody on this call or anybody watching this video to think that they need a thousand dollar camera to start making a video, to start making a short film or anything like that. You need just your cell phone. And that's what I'll be talking about today is how to make a video with just the, the phone in your pocket because the camera on these things are some, some of the best in the world, especially to fit inside of your pocket. I mean, it's incredible technology. It's so easy to pick up and use. And this is where I'll be spending my time um, instructing everyone on how to use a camera to make a phone camera to make a great video. Um, I also wanna speak about certain things that go into setting up your shots. So my first note here is landscape versus portrait. This is um, industry standard, but also a, a pet peeve of mine is people filming in portrait mode, people filming with their phone face up. You do not wanna do this on a video like you're, like you're gonna be making for this contest. Why? Because if you're filming upright like this, there's all this space on the right and left to your phone, to your camera, that is, that is just gonna be blank space. You're gonna be missing a lot of details. Filming in a portrait way is, is great if you're with the kids and you wanna pick up your phone really quickly and film it, but your videos, you gotta think about who's gonna be watching them and where they're gonna be watching them. It's gonna be on places like YouTube and Facebook and they're gonna be watched on computers and laptops and yes, even your cell phone, but YouTube players and Facebook players and even on your phone, Videos are meant to be watched in a wide um, aspect ratio. So you want to shoot it in landscape like this so that you pick up a lot more detail in your shots. And then we have your basic video settings. I myself use an Android phone. This is the Google Pixel 5. Um, if you use an iPhone, if you use any other Android phone, your settings will look different. But the principles in those settings are gonna be there. What I'm about to tell you are on all of your phones and we can all take access to this. And I'd like to spend time after the call to, to sort of walk through this or after our, our session today to walk through just the video settings on your respective phones to make sure that um, you know I give you the, the proper information to make sure you capture good video. So there's a few things I'd like you to keep in mind when it comes to filming, uh, to, when it comes to your video settings on your camera. There's your resolution, which I have highlighted um, here in, on the bottom picture. The resolution tells you essentially how much detail you want in your shot. So for instance, I have it uh, marked, the default in most phones is 1080p, which is HD high definition. Um, pretty much everything you watch on the internet is filmed in 1080p, so it's very good. Or there's 4K. If you have a phone that shoots in 4K and you want to use it, phenomenal. 4K resolution just means there's a lot more uh, pixel density in your shot. There's a lot more uh, details. So you can zoom in a lot more. You can capture a lot more details um, and so on. It's a larger file size. Um, so just keep that in mind. 1080p or 4K, you'll capture great video regardless. So it's, it's as you choose. You have that tool to yourself. Um, then we have frames per second, which again is another technical jargon thing, but all that really means is it is how many 
frames or think of it like a picture, there are in a second of video. So the default for, for most videos, the way I, even our eyes tend to capture light and capture uh, moving objects is at 24 frames per second, which means think of it just that there's your video camera is taking 24 pictures, putting them together in for one second of, of footage. And that's how it works. And you can scale that up. So for instance, again, if you look at the bottom image, there's the, there's the option for 60 or 30 frames per second. The higher your frames per second is, it means you're capturing more of those pictures for every second of uh, video. And that allows you to slow down your footage. So it, it, again, back to the brainstorming and back, back to the storyboard. If you're thinking, wow, I really feel like there's a specific shot in my video that I want to be in slow motion. Well, if that's the case, you need to shoot at a high frame rate, a high, a high frames per second. So 60, which most phones today um, do very well at a high resolution, like 1080p, you can slow that down and get very nice, smooth um, shots. And then you, you can even have cameras and even some cell phones, like the new iPhones, for example, they can shoot up to 120 frames per second, which is you know insane that phones can do that, but it gives you you know, someone who's never filmed a video before or edited a video before in their life, the ability to make really amazing slow motion detailed shots. And then your grid layout, which is if you look at, you get a really good shot of it on your top photo here, uh, me taking a grid layout of my tiny little Christmas tree. Um, it's a grid layer of a three by three. So that means there's three rows and three columns. And this helps you frame your shot. Framing is, is incredibly important uh, when it comes to filming because it makes you align the details and align the viewer's focus. So in this case, I wanted my little Christmas tree to be on the left side because I feel like it looks really good there and allows me to show a little bit more detail in the background. And the background can be blurred out a little bit if I so choose. So it's, it's all about frame composition. And Framing, again, with the grid layout is very important, even if you're doing an interview. So I'm going to come back to the Zoom for just a second, because I'd like to um, look at myself, if I can do that. No, I can't. I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate it, and I might look a little weird, but that's okay. So let's say you're interviewing somebody for your video. There's a few things you want to keep in mind. One is where your subject is placed on the grid, right? Right now, because I'm talking to you, I am right in the center of my camera. And that's okay because you're the audience and you know I'm talking to you. But when it comes to uh, uh, filming somebody for their video, often a good rule of thumb, sometimes the best practice, what you often see on, on online videos on TV is what's called an interview style which is I am slightly to the left or to the right of the lens and not looking directly into it, but looking just off to the side of it. So if I'm on the left side of the camera, I'm the subject matter. If I'm on the left side of the camera, I tilt my body a little bit and I'm looking um, on the right side or on uh, you're the person filming, I'm looking to your left or onto my right. And this way, it creates a little bit more of, a, 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 of an intimate setting. It's more of an interview, more of a conversation. So if this is the type of objective you like with your uh, contest video, I would recommend uh, an interview style would be quite good. And another thing to recommend uh, that I would, that I would keep, ask you to keep in mind is where your subject's um, head is in relationship to the um, essentially where the camera cuts off. So I think right now, um, my, you know, I'm probably cutting off at my forehead somewhere. That's fine for this because it's uh, over Zoom and we all know what this is like, we're all at home. But for a video, you don't want this because you're missing information here. You tend to wanna leave some space. I don't know if you can see any space, but if I'm the subject matter and the camera's in front of me, make sure that there's just a little bit of space uh, between the top of my head and the top of the camera where it cuts off. And the reason for that is, 
is that it gives you more room to play in editing. You can zoom in and you're not cutting, you're not cutting into somebody's eyes. You're still cutting into their entire torso of what you shot. It also doesn't look so great if your subject is cut off and they look like this, right? We want to make sure that your subject, yourself or whoever you're filming, look as good as possible on camera. Um, I note here, try to avoid zooming in digitally. One thing where cameras fall short is on digital zoom. Big fancy cameras, they have camera lenses that you can zoom in and zoom out and they look great because they cost $3,000 and they better look great. Your phone, it's all, it's all sensors. It's all, it's all very compact. It's a lot of it is, is digital software running this stuff. So zooming in, like when you pinch to zoom in, it, you sometimes lose a lot of the details because you're asking the camera, the, the, the cell phone's you know, uh, chipsets, the, it's, it's the way the, the processors and all that, to do things digitally instead of within mirrors, which traditional cameras do. Um, if your phone has two, two lenses, there's oftentimes a, a zoom lens. So you can see on, on my screenshots here, there's a 0.6, a one, a one X and a two X. So I can click the two X and it switches to a dedicated uh, lens that's two times zoom. So if you wanna zoom in, I recommend either using another, um, one of the other camera options on your cell phone or walking closer to your subject. Try to avoid digitally, uh, zooming in digitally and just walk closer to your subject and you'll get a more cl a crisper, cleaner shot. Shoot your storyboard, but don't be afraid to improvise. Again, the storyboard is like your God document. It is your Bible. You will follow it and you will get every shot you need and you'll be very happy. But play around a little bit. Improvise when you're, when you're filming. Try different angles. Make sure that you do your checklist. Get all the shots you, you wrote down on your storyboard so that you got everything you know you needed in advance and you're happy with that. And if you have some time, now you can start playing around with the angles. You're like, oh, you know what? I actually want to shoot my subject matter um, from a different perspective. Or maybe I want to use uh, a different technique. I want to do something a little bit less, um, less stable and I want to be a little bit more freehand. You could do all of that. Make sure you get your storyboard done and then Get creative. If you want, if you, if, you, if you have ideas you want to explore, do that. Make sure you get everything you need first, though, and then have, have your fun playing around with everything. Having a good storyboard, just, again, lets you be prepared for filming so that you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your t the time of, of the people you're filming with. Um, and then when you get all that done out of the way, you can have your, you can, you can, you can really just get creative with it. Stabilizing. This can sometimes be tricky. And again, I'm telling you, you don't need a fancy tripod. You don't need, uh, this is called the gorilla pod. You don't need a big, the big guy like this to keep your shots stable when you're filming with your cell phone. No, I don't think you need that at all. You can use something small like this a little kind of a guy with, it just comes with a little mount that fits onto your camera. That's great. If you want to spend a little bit of money on this contest, go to the dollar store, buy one or two of these tiny guys for two bucks and call it a day. When we were, when I was doing videos for the regiment, um, I work with um, you know, honorary Steve, Colonel, uh, Steve Gregory at, at Two Field. And we went to the Dollarama and we bought like, 60 of these kind of guys to film there and to give to the to the regiment so that they can film their own videos as well. These are super cheap. This is really the only thing I'll ever tell you to really buy. But if you don't want to do it, or maybe for whatever reason you can't find one on Amazon or they're sold out at the local Dollarama, totally fine. I have a note here, use a tree, right? If you're outside, prop your phone up on a tree, on a branch or something, and use that. If you're in your home, Use just a bunch of books and prop your phone up against it like that. There are so many ways that you can get the shots that you need and be stable without breaking the bank. You know, that's the whole point of this video is we're filming with nothing. We're filming with the phone in your pocket. And the reason why I, I, I'm emphasizing 
st uh, stability is because you don't want to be watching a video that's shaky, right? For example, if you're interviewing somebody, you want to make sure that your camera is stable so it doesn't just fall over or so that it doesn't, you're not wobbling. But for a video where you uh, want to be a little bit more run and gun, a little bit more action heavy, or you want to have maybe a documentary feel, what do you do? And you want to film on, on your hand, hold on to your phone, you know, have a good grip on it, keep your arms tight and sort of locked into your hips a little bit and, and just stay sturdy and walk slowly, move slowly. What's going to happen is that you're going to use your hips and your lower back almost like a, like a gimbal, right? Like you don't even need this thing. This is a fancy thing that I hook up my phone to, right? That's like all, like it's got all these bells and whistles on it to stabilize my photo, my videos, but you don't need that at all. Just keep your arms tight, locked into your hips, and you're good. You can even use, you know, these kind of a guys, right? Put your phone in the little mount, and you, you can have this. This helps stabilize your shots. Or maybe one your maybe you or one of your kids has a selfie stick. Use that. It's great. I mean, you know, we make fun of people who use selfie sticks, but you can get good video with it. So why not? And the last thing I want to talk about is B-roll. So B-roll is anything that is not your um, primary um, piece of footage. So using um, this, this uh, call, this webinar as an example, me talking to the camera is what we call A-roll. That's my primary shot, me. Um, or if you're interviewing somebody, your A-roll is the subject that you're interviewing. It's whatever the, the primary focus of your video is. B-roll is everything you put on top of that to add context. So in this case, the context, the B-roll would be my PowerPoint. Um, if you're interviewing somebody, the B-roll would could be, excuse me, the B-roll, you know, could be um, photos of that of that individual's past of of their experience with the artillery. It could be, you know, you filming them around their house going through old photo albums, for instance, that would be B-roll. Um, you can also make entire video out of B-roll. Again, we are in COVID. It's, you know, touch and go. It's a little risky to say, okay, everybody go out and have fun. If you wanna stay home and work on a video with just B-roll, you can do that. And there's a lot of great videos out there that do that. And I have, re I have a little note here, resources attached at the end of this, document, I've linked um, to a website called Combat Camera, which if for those who may not be familiar, it's just a um, reservoir of B-roll footage of the Canadian military and all of its different branches. You can pull from, you can just download a whole bunch of B-roll and make a phenomenal video. I mean, some of the videos we did for the regiment, it's themselves for two field. We went on Combat Camera, downloaded a lot of B-roll and just used that. Even for our own clients, sometimes we'll, we'll, we pitch them a video where we just use B-roll. So you can do that too. You don't need, even need to pick up a camera if you don't want to. It's, there's tools out there for you to do it. I have here a link to a video. I call it, there are no limits to your creativity. I linked to this video twice throughout the, the presentation and I'm not gonna play it all. I just want you guys to, to see where it is. This is a, a filmmaker. Who, who makes videos for YouTube, who got hired by Samsung, cell phone, to do an entire video using Samsung's phone. And it is absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend everyone watch this. And the reason I wanted to show you this and to ask you to watch it, one, because it's phenomenal what he did just out the gate, but I don't want there, I don't want anybody to feel that there's a barrier to entry. There isn't. If you have an idea, you can make it, right? Again, cell phone. Almost everyone has one. Use it. In that video, they're literally filming on a Samsung camera, on a selfie stick, on a scooter, right? That's it. There's nothing complicated about it. There's just having an idea and executing it with what's in your pocket. So. Again, there 
there is no limit to your creativity and there is no barrier to entry. Lighting. Lighting is incredibly important. It's almost foundational to a good video. If you have bad lighting, your video is gonna look off. Um, it can really make or break your shots. If you're in an area that's too dark, um, you know, your shot quality might not be too good. And if you're in a, an area that's too bright, you'll be uh, what's called blown out and you'll be just too bright. So what can you do? Well, there's, uh, I'll get to white balance in a little bit, but you have these two images here, right? One on top and one on the bottom. This whole thing is to emphasize to you that you don't need to go out and rent big fancy lights, professional grade lights to, to make a video. If you want to spend the cash and do it, you know, all, all for it, enjoy it. It's a lot of fun, but you can just use the sun, use natural light and you're going to make a good video. Now, so there's some rules to apply to that. So you're using natural light. There's usually times of day that are better to film in. For instance, you don't want to film at, uh, you don't always want to film at, for example, noon when the sun is at the highest point in the sky, because oftentimes it's quite bright. I mean, we're in the, we're in the middle of December in Canada. So, it, you know, and it's cloudy all the time. So I don't think we need to worry about this right now, but, you know, moving forward, when you want to keep these tips in mind, you tend to really want to film more in the morning when the sun's out, it's bright, but not too bright. Um, and you want to film somewhere where there's not a lot of contrast, meaning you don't want to film somewhere where there's a section that is really bright from the sun and then really dark from the shadows because your camera's sort of going to freak out. Your phone's going to freak out and be like, uh, I don't know where to, to focus on and I don't know where to like put more emphasis. Should I put more emphasis on the thing that's super bright or should I put the emphasis on something that's really dark? It's going to mess with all the centers and your sensors and you're not going to have fun. So make sure you, you, you plan this out. So for instance, if you're doing an, uh, an interview, if you're filming somebody, do not film somebody, the subject matter that is against the window. So I have my window right here. Don't have me like this when it's a sunny day because all the sun is going to come over me and it's going to darken me out. I'm going to be all shadows. As you can see, this is uh, Lori who used to work with us at Soak. We made this video on how to film with your cell phone and how to get good light. It is attached at the end, so you can always refer back to it. But as you can see here, she's standing um, against the window and we can't make out her expression. We don't know anything, what she's feeling or, how, or, or anything like that. That's not what you want. Instead, the subject should be standing in front of the window. Let the natural light fill your eyes, fill your, fill your, fill the subject matter, because that's where you'll get a good shot. As you can see at the bottom, she's well lit. Using a using a good window and the natural light um, removes shadows on your face. So, for instance, I don't have top down lights here, but you know you have pot lights in your home. They come down, it creates shadows under your eyes and shadows under your neck. That's really not what you want when you're filming a subject. You really want to fill out their face well because it makes them look better. It makes your video look better too. Ryan, can I interrupt for a sec? Uh, sure. Um, I went on, on, uh, on the internet and on Google, they have uh, lights that you, you stick on the back of your screen. Yes. Yes, so the, they, they sell starting at about thirty-five bucks yeah. and going up depending on what you want. You yeah. can get you can get a, a light that go that sticks on the back of your desktop monitor, your 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 laptop monitor, and yeah. gives you good uh, face lighting. Sorry, Absolutely, I, yeah. Uh, that's called they 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 always kind of look different, but that's sort of what you would call almost like a ring light. They usually come like in a circular form. And you would essentially um, put your camera yeah, in the middle better, of it, and the ring would be. Form, is it? I'm the sorry. Circular, the circular form is a better form. Um, it, it is better because it fills up more space. But these thirty dollar ones you find on on Amazon, I'd love to take a look at them. I'm sure they're good too. Um, if you, I think if you'll you find wanna... if you use the circle uh, light, you'll have possibly an over. If you look at my picture right now, I'm yeah. You I'm can lit from with one, the circle lights, you can side, adjust it. 
Yeah. I'd you can, you can adjust the level so you can make it less bright. Um, yeah, but you're, you're going into another level of yeah. complexity for, for sure. Yeah, people, if that's right? something you want if, to delve into, if, I'll happily... If I, if I showed you what I'm using as a light here, you'd probably keel over. I'm just, <laughs> you, I'm just using a $15 spotlight I bought at the hardware store today for fun. Hey, uh, if and it gets the job done, it gets the job one done. Of these, one of these metal rigs... Uh, where is it? Somewhere here. There. Oh, it's hard to see, but it's up there. Uh, it's hooked up to the curtain rod, and yeah. it's and, and you can see I'm shooting on the opposite wall. Yeah. So I'm getting a nice soft sideway light, which is what you want in photography, and I'm getting the a bit of a V and the, and so on. So there you go. It's very easy to do, um, not very hard, and you yeah. don't have to buy anything fancy. Or yeah, just, and and to build off off what you're saying, if you're using natural light or if you're using a spotlight, yep. you want to avoid um, having it too much on one side. For instance, if it'll light you know one half of your face and then keep the other face um, really shadowed and dark. So that's what I'm that's when I talk about avoid sh heavy shadows and avoid too much contrast because right. that's you not want, really the, the uh, yeah you want to imitate natural lighting exactly. So. I also have a note here, don't worry, your phone makes a, a lot of this automatic. Now, this is a true statement with conditions. The conditions are make sure you follow these rules and best practices and um, light your subject well, and you'll be very happy. And the phone will just automatic, like, will be automatic and make a little other things a little bit easier. But if I go back a slide, you see here on the top photo, there's a little sunlight and a slider. That is your phone, uh, sort of a digital adjustment to how much light it's bringing in and, and keeping out. So if you feel like you wanna just play around with it a little bit more, again, use natural light, mimic natural light, but you have that slider to play around with just a little bit. Don't, don't go crazy with it, but it's there to play around. And you could also, you know, if, you know, I'm sure you all know if, if you're filming something and you tap on the, your subject that you want to focus on, it adjusts everything around you more or less. So please just keep that in mind. And then, so I want to speak a little bit about white balance. This is a technical term, meaning you want things to not be too orange or too, too skewed into one uh, color. So I have an example here. This is a photo I took years and years ago when I was just learning how to use a camera and you can tell that my white balance is off. The, the photo on the left, you see it's got, it's almost like too green and too, a little bit too saturated, a little bit too orange. So what you do, make sure you do this in, in, in your, when you're keeping in mind when you're filming your shots is you wanna try to keep it as balanced as possible. You wanna make sure it looks as natural. So that's what white balance is. It's like removing any of the um, odd colors like, like, you know, this, this white pillar in the background, right? That's green. We don't want it green. It's actually a white pillar. So you make it white. And this is something just to keep in mind when you're filming, but I'm also to come, this is also something you can do in editing, uh, in post-production and the resources I have attached at the end, um, will go over how you can do a white balance in post-production. You can also, um, look it up online. There's about, 5 million videos on it as well. Audio. I'm leaving audio for last because I would say it's arguably the most important part of any video. You can get away with not having the best looking footage. It could be a little blurry. It could be a little ro low res, low resolution. Um, and the, your audience, the viewers can forgive that. Your lighting can be a little bit off. It could be a little too bright or a little bit too dark, but hey, well, it, that's forgiving. But people, and I'm sure you've all experienced this when you've been watching a video online. If the audio is, if you can't even listen and listen to, to what someone's speaking, if they're, if they're just almost like, it sounds like they're yelling, if it just sounds like mushy, like they're gargling marbles, if the music is too loud or too blown out, you'll just turn off the video. I mean, I do it all the time. And I'm sure you guys have as well, because it's not in, 
it's not, you can't, you can't, it's just so, there's something about it that's very irritating to people that you just want to stay away from it. So make sure you have good audio, please, 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 please. And if you want to use good audio, there's a few tricks. One is obviously you can go out and buy a little microphone that you can attach to your cell phone um, from Amazon that's meant for this stuff. Great. But you can also get away with, it's not the world's greatest solution, but you can use the microphone on your earphones. So if you have, for example, like the Apple ones here, little wired ones, you just plug it into your phone, right? And attach that, 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 the microphone to your subject matter or to yourself, and it'll pick up the audio and include it in your recording. So use that. You, you might have tons of them lying around. If you have Bluetooth earbuds, like I have, you know, Bluetooth earbuds right here. I'd put one in my ear, um, sync it with my, like, make sure it's attached to my phone. And if I hit record, my, my Bluetooth buds, if I speak into them, it'll be captured on my recording. So there's a lot of tricks that you can just use with what you already have to make sure you get good audio. If you're doing voiceover, have your script ready, hide under a blanket that's propped up underneath two chairs and start recording. I'm, it sounds like I'm asking you to just build forts and have fun, you know, have fun and build forts, but this is actually something for real. I mean, you see this with people who record music um, or who are professional voiceover artists. You know, they, they work in a soundproof booth, they have carpet on the floor and they got like fuzzy styrofoam padding that they put up on their walls. And that's because all that stuff absorbs sound and keeps outside sound out. Um, you don't need that, really. All you need to do is set up two chairs. You know, I'm, I'm looking at my, my, my dinner table right now. You set up two chairs, put a couple blankets on top of it, you know, sit down underneath it and start recording into, into your microphone. And you're going to get, you know, professional level voiceover. I mean, it is, it is pretty impressive. And I really recommend if you're using voiceover, do that. Truly, truly do that. And I also end on choosing the right music. I'm a, I love good music in my videos. I sometimes even build my videos based off of a song I like. So I'll go, I'll find a song. I'm like, oh, I can make a good video to this. And I, find, I get a little inspiration from it. Um, if you have a song in mind, that's great. But we need to use royalty-free music, especially for this contest. If you're doing something just for yourselves, fine. You can use an Ed Sheeran song and have fun with it. You know? But because this is for a contest and because this is going to be uploaded to YouTube and Facebook, if it's not royalty free, if it's a copyrighted song, like something by the Beatles, for instance, right? You're going to make your entire video, you're going to upload it to YouTube and YouTube's going to flag it. It's going to tell you, hey, I know you're using this song from the Beatles. You're not allowed to use it. And the artillery is not going to be happy with that because they're going to get a notice and it's going to look bad on them. So you have to use royalty free music, which is copyright free music that you could use free. You just download the song and you can use it in your video and use it as is. I have uh, resources again attached at the end um, for royalty free music. Um, there's a phenomenal library on YouTube. If you have a YouTube account, which most people do when they go onto YouTube, you just go in, you go to their YouTube audio library and you have <laughs> thousands and thousands and thousands of songs to choose from. And for all of our videos, for the most part, all of our videos internally at Soak, we use YouTube uh, audio music, audio uh, audio library. And even for the regiment, when I was making those videos, I was pulling all my music from there, you know, three, four years ago. So use these resources. Try to avoid using your favorite Beatles song because you're going to get dinged for it and it's you're going to have to pull it down. Whew. I'm just going to take a sip, a simple glass of water. Excuse me, a sip. <sighs> Excuse me. Don't forget to review. So we've gone over filming. We've gone over lighting. We've gone over camera. Um, we've gone over uh, audio. 
This is your production phase. Imagine you're done for the day. Before you leave, before you pack up and go home, make sure you got all the shots you need. Look back on your storyboard. Look back on your shot list. Make sure you ticked off everything and everything is saved on your phone or backed up onto a computer somewhere. Because the last thing you want is to arrive at your computer, start editing your video and not know where that very important shot is. Review, 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 review. I always spend 10 minutes after any shoot going through my camera and making sure I got all the shots I need because I would be incredibly embarrassed. And I've done this before, um, unfortunately, but having to call up a client afterwards and be like, hey, I need to come back and film this because I forgot to hit record or it didn't save properly or something like that. So for yourselves, peace of mind, for your own time's sake and for the time of your friends that you'll be filming with, review, spend that extra time.